Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we hand over your word to you. Holy Spirit of God, we ask that you teach us the word of truth, the word of life. And we ask that your word will transform our lives today. Let that, your word bring a change. The Bible says that the word of God is quick and active, sharper than any two-edged sword. We ask that the word will pierce through every part of our lives. And the word will bring result. The word will bring transformation. Thank you, our Father and our God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. I welcome you, brothers and sisters, and everyone who is uh, connecting on this Surefire Live conference platform to this program today. The Lord God Almighty bless you mightily in Jesus' name. Our topic today is eternal life, part four, uh, focus on the resurrection of the dead, the resurrection of the dead. And our texts uh, will be taken from the book of John chapter 11, verses 25 and 26. Uh, let me start by uh, giving us the objective of this teaching today. Because when people hear the resurrection of the dead, uh, there could be different and many interests. Uh, and as I have always shared, that the, it, it, we have to understand the concept of eternal life, that we receive it here while on earth. When you understand that, I say most of the arguments and the worries people worry about will fizzle out because it does not benefit much. So our objective for this study on the resurrection of the dead is to understand the victory Jesus Christ has given us over death and thereby, number one, overcome the fear of death, hence any other fear. Number two, live our lives to the fullest and achieve greatness while here on earth. Let me make this point that true greatness is to do what God created you to do here on earth. True greatness, real greatness is for you, is for me, is for us, to do what God created us to do here on earth. So that when the last day comes, our breath is gone, you will be a fulfilled man, you will be a fulfilled woman, you will be a fulfilled person, and the Lord Jesus will welcome you into his eternal abode. Let's start uh, by way of introduction. I want to say that the greatest fear of humankind is the fear of death. The greatest fear of humankind is the fear of death. Fear in any form paralyzes and limits one from achieving greatness. And we'll, our texts, again, John chapter 11, verses 25 to 26. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live, and whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? That is our text. John chapter 11, verses 25 and 26. We will come back to that. Let me repeat the statement I just made before. The greatest fear of humankind is the fear of death. Fear in any form paralyzes, and limits one from achieving greatness. The fear of death drives people into all kinds of bondage. Right now, the Almighty God set you free from every form of fear in Jesus' name. Whatever fear is paralyzing you, paralyzing and limiting you from achieving greatness, achieving your potential, Living the life God Almighty has given to you to live, I command that fear in the name of Jesus to be destroyed. The Almighty God destroy that fear 
in the name of Jesus. And that's why you need to be familiar with Hebrews chapter 2, verses 14 and 15. Hebrews 2, 14 and 15. Because you have to understand that Jesus has destroyed him who had the power of death. And therefore has also obtained victory over death for you and me. The Bible says there in Hebrews chapter 2, 14 and 15, Inasmuch then as the children have partaken of flesh and blood, he himself likewise shared in the same that, do, that through death he might destroy him who had the power of death. That is the devil. Did you hear that? Jesus partook, became flesh, so that he can die and by his death destroy him who had the power of death. That is the devil. Verse 15, and release. I wish everybody can just shout that with me. And release those who through the fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. The fear of death is the greatest fear of mankind. And it drives many to all manner of bondage. But here you can hear the Bible says clearly that Jesus Christ, through his death, destroyed him who had the power of death. That is the devil. And by so doing, he released those who, through the fear of death, were all their lifetime subject to bondage. The devil keeps using the fear of death to threaten people. Are you threatened by fear of death or any other fear? Is sickness making you often fear in your heart and say, ah, I might die? That is the trick of the devil. Why? Because the Bible says healing is the children's bread. And by the stripes of Jesus, you were healed. Oh, come to him who has the power to heal. Jesus still heals today. And so I declare that fear of death to be paralyzed. And I cast that fear of death out of your life. But rather, I ask by the stripes of Jesus, be healed. I declare one more time over everyone connected to this platform, be healed by the stripes of Jesus, in the name of Jesus Christ. Jesus has destroyed the devil and stripped him of that power. No devil can kill you, brothers and sisters. Fear not. Jesus said, fear not him. Fear not. Do not be afraid. God told Joshua, fear not. And so fear paralyzes brothers and sisters especially the fear of death. So in this subject of the resurrection of the dead, we must understand that Jesus Christ, the one through whom God has given us eternal life, has destroyed him who had the power of death. That is the devil. You saw that evidently written in Hebrews chapter 2, verses 14 and 15. That the devil still keeps pretending and using the fear of death to threaten people. Because as the Bible says, that the people perish because of lack of knowledge. But today, you have received the knowledge of God that Jesus, by his death, has destroyed him, the devil, who had the power of death and has released those who were held in the fear, uh, held in bondage by the fear of death. Hallelujah. Glory be to Jesus. So, come out of every fear. Declare to yourself, I am coming out, I am coming out, I am coming out. Whatever fear, I want you to declare to yourself right now. Today, uh, the, the Almighty God by His Spirit wants to minister life. I want you to declare to yourself as we are speaking right now. Whatever fear has been uh, paralyzing you, hindering you, declare to yourself and say, call that fear and say, I am coming out of you. I come out of you right now. Fear in the name of Jesus. 
I paralyze you. You who have been paralyzing me now, I paralyze you in my life. No more fear. No more fear. No more fear. No more fear of death. No more fear of death in the name of Jesus. Look at what 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 7 says about you. The scripture says, God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of sound mind. God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of love, but of power and of sound mind. God has not given us the spirit of fear. God has not given you the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of sound mind. Receive that sound mind now. Receive that sound mind now in the name of Jesus Christ. Once again, I cast out every devil causing fear in your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Oh, thank you, our Father. We want to look deeper into the resurrection of the dead. In John chapter 11, if you start from, verses, uh, from verse 21, rather, all the way to verse, uh, I believe, 45, verse 21 to verse 45. You see the record there, the account of Lazarus. You remember? Lazarus died for four days. And Jesus went and raised him up. And there Jesus taught us a very important lesson that will help us understand the truth about the resurrection of the dead. So let me make one point, uh, I emphasize a point here, that in this series of eternal life teaching, if you have picked one thing from this teaching so far, this teaching series, let that one thing be this, that what matters is how we live while here on earth, that that is what matters. I have made that emphasis, I've made that emphasis. And I will continue to make it till we can, you know, internalize it and live it. Uh, because oftentimes you hear discussions and worries about things that don't help us at all. Um, like this teaching of eternal life. Uh, we can skew into the subject of, uh, as I've often referred to, which comes before which, the eschatology, the events to the end, and there are a whole lot of arguments about them. And you ask yourself, what does this do to you living this life here now? If eschatology leads us to the end, I'd rather prepare myself for that end and prepare myself well. And thank God everything I need to be well equipped to be well prepared, to live well and fulfill my life and peacefully face that end has been given to me in the scriptures by Jesus Christ, my Lord, by the revelation of God through Jesus Christ in the scriptures. All has been given to us. And so it is good to have that knowledge. It's good to have. If time permits us, one of these days we will address it. But let's focus on the important thing. So I want to make that emphasis again. That if you have to pick one thing from this eternal life teaching series so far, please let that one thing be that you know, you understand, you have imbibed this truth of the revelation of that eternal life. That what matters is how we live while here on earth. Whether you have received that eternal life while you are here on earth and that you have lived by the power, the grace, the provision of that eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ while you are here on earth. That is the critical thing. So having said that, Let's look at that scripture in, in um, John chapter 11. As I said from verse 21 to 45, but we're just going to focus on 25 and 26 because you know the other story. Let's run from 21. Okay. Now Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. 
Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Note that word, rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. This is the point. So many people are living their life and it's just, okay, the last day we will resurrect. Okay, but what happens between now and that last day? You know, the point I made about um, uh, the eschatology event of the end. Let me, so that you don't think, uh, I just don't want to address this event. It is, the truth is this. There are very few people who will live to that time. <laughs> and we are already in the last days. Even the apostles said, we are in the last days. So when I hear people now beginning to argue about that, I'll sit down and I say, do you really apply wisdom here? Think about it. Your last day is the day you breathe your last breath here on this part of life. And that's why it is important for us to focus on what we do while we are still breathing, what we do with this life. And that's what we want to learn uh, right here, right now. So there, Martha said, I know, answered Jesus, I know. My brother will rise again in the last day. Please put back the scripture and hear what Jesus answered her. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? Let's just stay there. Take a moment and look at that. And I want us to look at verse 26 again. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. And then he asks, do you believe this? Oh, may the Spirit of God give us understanding of this scripture. You know, there are people who may read this scripture and then they get confused. Ah, what was Jesus saying here? He who believes in me and is living will never die. This is the truth. This is what we're talking about. This is the eternal life that we receive. Jesus here wasn't talking about this death. That tells us that life is continuous. When we breathe our last breath here, that is not the end of human life. And that's why we're talking about the resurrection of the dead. So Jesus here was saying that I am the resurrection and the life. I am life. And so if you believe in me while you are alive, just what I have been emphasizing, that it is while you are here on this part of life that you receive this life. So Jesus was saying, if you believe in me, while you are here in this part of life, you have received everlasting life. And that's what he said, shall never die. And he, was, he turned around and asked Martha, do you believe this? And she said to him, yes, Lord. I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who is to come into the world. Because of time, we want to move further. So when we talk about resurrection of the dead, we are talking about bringing back to life by that same eternal spirit of life, that eternal spirit of life, bringing human back to life. However, it is not in this same form as we are now. And we will make that distinction quickly. So in Romans chapter 8, verse 11, Romans chapter 8, verse 11, there the Bible says, but if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. So it is that spirit. In fact, John 6, 63 says, it, the flesh profits nothing. It says it is the spirit that quickeneth. It is the spirit that gives life. So resurrection of the dead is bringing back to life 
I've been in a transformed body. That's very important because you see how that makes the difference in the mistake that many people make. In a transformed body by the Spirit of God, the eternal Spirit of God, the Spirit of life. So in the passage, Jesus said, I mean, that is uh, John chapter 11, 25, and 26, just to emphasize a few things. Jesus said, whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. And he asked, do you believe this? And I want to ask every one of us here on this platform, do you believe this? Do you believe that if you believe in Jesus, you receive eternal life? And you will never die. And I told us that death is not about this physical world. Every one of us will come to the end in this physical world, except the few, that, or except those who may be there when Jesus comes. And so we have to be prepared. And so we have to understand. But Jesus was here saying that I am that life. God, the Father, has life and has given me the power to give life. And I give that life to those who believe in me. So let's make a few points from this. This uh, passage, that is uh, John chapter 11, verses 25 and 26. Number one, there we see that only those who believe in Jesus while here on earth have eternal life. Only those who believe in Jesus while here on earth have eternal life. Number two, that Jesus here demonstrated that he has power over death and power to give life. That you will see when you now go further to verses 41, 42, 43, where he called forth Lazarus. In verse 43, he said, Lazarus, come forth. And the dead came back to life. So Jesus demonstrated that he has power over death by this event of bringing back Lazarus from death to life. He said, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me while he is alive will never die. Hallelujah. And he went further to demonstrate it. And he called for the one who was dead for four days back to life. Demonstrating that he has power over death. He has power over grief. He has power to give life. But let me make another point, point three, that as exciting as that may be, what Jesus demonstrated, please understand <laughs> This is just raising the dead. And raising the dead is like child's play in the spiritual dimension that we are talking about when you compare it to the resurrection of the dead. And I make that point clear. You see, raising the dead is bringing life back into the body. And that same body leaves. So that same body is the physical body, is the body of this terrestrial world, this earthly body, the body that we have, that is the main difference. That is raising the dead. That's what Jesus did. He raised the dead to demonstrate that he has power over death. So he raised Lazarus from the dead. But what we are talking about is the resurrection of the dead. The resurrection of the dead. Only Jesus Christ has resurrected from the dead. That is the difference. The resurrection of the dead is by the spirit and in a transformed body. Not this physical body as we have it now. That body is not earthly. So that is why when people tell you that they saw people in heaven in a dream, or, I mean, that they died, rather. Yes, even in a dream. They, 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 they had a dream and they saw people who died in heaven know that uh, they had malaria. Or they, they know where else they saw. 
Why? Because it is only the resurrected body transformed by the power of the Spirit of God can be in heaven. I know this is hard for you, but that is the truth. Jesus, the Bible says, is the firstborn from the dead. And he was raised by the power of God, by the Spirit of God, as we saw there in Romans chapter 8, verse 11. You can note it and read it for yourself. He says, if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he that raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. So that spirit, while you are here physically on earth, gives life to you. At the resurrection, that same spirit will raise and we will come back in a transformed body. Let's see a few scriptures to confirm this. In John chapter 5, verses 21 to 29. John chapter 5, verses 21 to 29. He said, for as the father raises the dead and gives life to them, even so the son gives life to whom he will. To whom he will. The son, Jesus Christ, he gives life to whom he will. Because of time, please jump to 28 and 29. Most assuredly, I say to you, the hour is coming and now is when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God and those who hear will live. For as the Father has life in himself, so he has granted the Son to have life in himself and he has given him authority to execute judgment also because he is the Son of Man. 28, do not marvel at this. For the hour is coming in which all who are in the graves, where are they? In the graves, will hear his voice and comfort those who have done good to the resurrection of life and those who have done evil to the resurrection of condemnation. Please note these two words here. So there are two resurrections. The resurrection of life and the resurrection of condemnation. Note those. So when we're talking about the resurrection of the dead, there are two resurrections. And you will see how this tie in to other things that you have been hearing before that people talk about, oh, rapture, oh, this, all that. You will see. Let's move on. So two resurrections of the dead. The resurrection of life and the resurrection of condemnation. And I have made the point clearly that the one who is resurrected from death is with a transformed body, not this body. So let us look at 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 42 to 45, to 54 rather. It's a long read again, but I will just cut it. Let's perhaps because of time just focus on uh, verse 52, so that we see that we shall be changed. Look at from verse 50. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does corruption inherit incorruption. Note that flesh and blood. 51. Behold, I tell you a mystery. This was Paul speaking by the Spirit of God that the revelations that were given to him. He said, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. 52. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed and we shall be changed. Praise the name of the Lord. So it is not the same body, it is a transformed body. Please take time and read it for yourself. Second Corinthians chapter 15 from verse 42 all the way down to 54. And you will see that the Bible then talks about that body that will be resurrected. And Jesus is our clear example. You know, when people talk about the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, they miss the fact that it was the body that was transformed. It wasn't the spirit of Jesus that went to heaven. Jesus was transformed. That body was transformed. So there was no body that lied down, decayed, 
and then Jesus went to heaven uh, in the spirit. It was the transformed body. That's the same way the resurrection of the dead. So the dead will be brought back to life in two separate badges. So two termi three terminologies that you must know. I've told us the first terminology. On the positive side, you have first resurrection, as I call it, the first resurrection. And you see this in the scripture. We'll just look at it, Revelation 21 to 15. We're going to go in detail there. And then the second, you have second resurrection. Now, following that also, in the positive side, you have resurrection of life that I've just told us. And the resurrection of life is for the dead in Christ. The dead in Christ. So those who died before Jesus appears and they have received eternal life, they will take part in the first resurrection, which is called the resurrection of life. On the negative side, you have the second resurrection. And that, those are the people who will resurrect the resurrection of condemnation. That's the people we talked about that will face judgment. So, and these are the people that will partake in the second death. And these are those who died without Christ. This is the summary of the resurrection of the dead. So, key thing is Jesus. Do you have Jesus? Now let's look at the scripture to confirm these few points and then we will leave it there. Revelation chapter 20 from verse 4. It says, And I saw thrones, and they sat on them, and judgment was committed to them. Then I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded for their witnesses to Jesus and for the word of God, who had not worshipped the beast or his image and had not received his mark, on their foreheads or on their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ for a thousand years. Verse 5. But the rest of the dead did not live again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. This is the first resurrection. So note that term. The first resurrection. Now we continue. Blessed and holy is he who has part in the first resurrection. Over such the second death has no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. Did you hear that? So those who have part in the first resurrection, they will reign with Christ. And the second death will not touch them. Now let's jump to verse 11. And you see the second resurrection, the resurrection of condemnation and those who will take part in the second death. Then I saw a great white throne and him who sat on it from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead small and great standing before God and books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged. And the dead were judged according to their works by the things which were written in the books. The, the sea gave up the dead who were in it. And death and hates, which is the grave, delivered up the dead who were in them and they were judged each one according to his works then death and hate which is grave were cast into the lake of fire this is the second death and anyone not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire Praise the name of the Lord. First Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 16 confirm this first resurrection for those who are in Christ Jesus. First Thessalonians 
chapter 4, verse 16. It says, For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. The dead in Christ will rise first. The first resurrection. He said, Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. Oh, brothers and sisters, if you have this kind of hope, why are you afraid? Why should you fear anything? John chapter 5, verse 24. That John that we read before, let's just again confirm John chapter 5, verse 24. Verse 24 says, Most assuredly I say to you, he who hears my word and believes in him who sent me has everlasting life and shall not come into judgment, but has passed from death into life. Can you connect with that then? Um, Revelation chapter 20 from verse 4 that we saw before, 5 and 6. Those who, the dead in Christ, they pass from death to life. The resurrection of life and the resurrection of death. I mean of a condemnation, which is the second resurrection. Brothers and sisters, I think this is the most important thing for us to know. That in Christ Jesus, God has given Jesus the authority. He has life in himself to give life to all those who believe in him. As we have seen in the book of John chapter 5, from verse 21, verse 21 in particular, all the way to 29. Note that scripture and read it for yourself. And so everyone that is in Christ Jesus, even though we die in this physical world, when Jesus comes, he will resurrect us. We will be like him. In fact, if you remember in the book of Matthew chapter 19, they were asking him about the resurrection and he told them, he said, you, you err, not, have not understanding. Because they were talking about in the resurrection when um, a man rises up and all that. Who's why? That man that had um, whether five, uh, I mean the woman that the brothers all seven had. He said to them, you don't understand. In the resurrection, they will be like the angels of God. <laughs> they neither marry nor given to marriage. It is a glorious body. It's a glorious life. Praise the name of the Lord. So fear not, there is life for you. Life to live here now and to live at the appearing of Jesus Christ. So whether we are here till Jesus appears or whether our end comes, what is important is what we do with the eternal life that Jesus, God has given to us through Jesus Christ, his son. So let me summarize with a few points, four critical points I want to make. Number one, that Jesus is the resurrection and the life, according to John chapter 11, verses 25 and 26. John chapter 11, verses 25 and 26. Point number two, Jesus has power to give life now and forever. Jesus Christ has power to give life now and forever, according to John chapter 5, Verse 21 and verse 25. Point number three, that if you have Jesus, you should not fear death, nor any other fear, nor the devil, because Jesus has defeated the devil and death for you, for me, for us, for all those who believe. In Jesus Christ. I want to emphasize that. If you have Jesus Christ. You should not fear death. Nor the devil. Because Jesus has defeated the devil and death for us. Point number four. Now. While 
on this earth, in this part of life, let us use this power and authority Jesus has given us to the fullest. Use it to the fullest. Cast out devil. Heal the sick. Raise the dead. Work hard. Use the Holy Ghost guidance. Develop skill. Preach the gospel. Live to the fullest. Be very bold and daring. Be very bold and daring. Second Corinthians chapter 3, verse 12. He says, the Bible says there that since we have this hope, we speak with boldness of speech. Hallelujah. We speak boldly because we have this hope. We have eternal life. Thank you, Father God. Glory be to your holy name, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. One more round off here. Let us pray. Father, thank you for your word that we have heard. Thank you for teaching us the positive side of the resurrection of the dead and the negative side of the resurrection of the dead. The first resurrection, the resurrection of life for all those who die in Christ Jesus. Lord, we pray that we will be part and parcel by the eternal life that you have given us through your son, Jesus Christ. We ask by your eternal spirit of life, O oh God, keep us, that whether at the end of our life here on earth, when we breathe our last breath, or at the appearing of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, when he comes, we will be with you. And we will be in that everlasting kingdom of God to reign with Jesus, to serve you, our God forever. Thank you, our Lord and our King. Glory be to your holy name. And Father, we pray that we will never, anyone here will never be part of the negative side of the resurrection of the death. The second death will not be our portion. We shall all partake in that first resurrection, in that resurrection of life. We shall be changed, we shall be transformed into the glorious image of the Son of God. And we will be like him and live with him forever in the presence of God our Father. To you, O God, be all glory. And right now I ask, let the spirit of grace rest upon every one of us now. Receive the power to live the full life, the full potential that God has given you. Receive the spirit grace to be bold, never to fear anymore. You shall fulfill God's purpose and destiny for your life. Thank you, almighty God. All oh, glory be to our God. And let the church of Jesus Christ say, bigger, amen.